Hey John, you know what's nearly as embarrassing as turning up to the gig with no amplifiers? What is? Turning up with amps or other gear that doesn't work. And why wouldn't it work? Well, it might not work because it's been mishandled, but it might not work because it's been damaged electronically. Oh dear. And that never happens, does it? We never get in a situation on a gig where somebody's spiked your voltage and smoke has come out of something very, very important. Yeah, no, no one ever connects phase to phase no, instead ever, of phase ever. to neutral. Okay, ever. we all know it happens. Yep. How do you protect against it? Okay, well look, there's a couple of electrical things that we want to protect against. Um, there's interference and, and things like voltage, minor voltage fluctuations, and Which they can manifest as as not necessarily failures of the gear, mm. but they can they can show up as noise on the systems, buzzers, and things like that. Um, and there's uh, extreme over voltage, which mm. is the case of phase to phase connection rather than phase to neutral. Typically, something that's going to happen during rehearsal when smoke comes out just before you need the gear. Yeah, generally speaking, and and I guess also especially in situations where there's p temporary power being put in, uh, whether that's you know from a local supply or a generator, yeah, um, it's a lot easier for things to go wrong. So in like that pretty situation. much, we're talking about every gig that either of us have ever done. So a, a device like this is one perfect solution. This is the the Furman power distribution device. Yeah, this is in fact the PL Pro DMCE. Mm. Furman power conditioner and it, it does a couple of things. It's got power distribution on the back in the form of female IEC connectors mm. and there are 10 of those on the back spread across two separate breakers. There's also another one on the front. And isn't that convenient? There's like just the one piece of gear that you need. You, you have an IEC adapter out to a, a three pin socket and you can plug another piece of gear in the front. Yeah, exactly. And, and you've even got a USB port so you can use it to charge your eye thingy, which, which so of course people is forget. so important these days. Oh, the iPod's gone out. We can't play any music anymore. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's, it's hilarious. But yeah. the number of times I get asked, yeah. do you have an iPod charger on yeah. gigs? It, it happens a lot. I've actually started taking one. Now, one of the things we've known about the, the Furman products for a long time is they sit on the front of the rack and they have these cute little tubes that go in and out and provide you with light on the front of the gear where you need it. Now the classic problem with that of course was... The globes uh, blow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Filament globes are subject to, to you know, stress and, and they will eventually fracture and break. And of course you're bouncing the gear around so why would the yeah, globe yeah. blow? Yeah, in, in and out of trucks and so on, especially yeah. if it's being packed down when it's still warm. Yeah. Um, They've changed these to LED now, and in fact, it's a combination of different coloured LEDs to mm. give you a nice, nice colour white light. And you can adjust them inward and outward so you can actually illuminate the front of the gear. And of course, they're not going to get hot. You know, you're not going to accidentally burn yourself on no. them the way the way it used to happen. No. You can still dim them up and down. There's a very nice little dimmer here on the front, and you just tap on the front of the dimmer button, and it switches them on and off. It's very, very quick, easy to to access. Yeah. Of course, the thing that you notice is this wonderful indication that your power is okay. Yeah, and, and the other thing is that as soon as it's not okay, and like as soon as it's radically not okay, like if you get a major over voltage supply, uh, I think it's over about 280 volts, uh, the power conditioner will actually shut itself and all its connected devices down completely mm. and you need to do a manual reset on it. But this is like one of those vexed questions. Which is more important? Have your gear go out when you're not expecting it because somebody's done something to supply or have your gear go out when you're not expecting and it's it's history and it's smoke and it's tears and you know we've seen how this device can protect against some pretty severe overloads they claim 6,500 amps at a surge. Now you do the numbers, that's a little over one and a half megawatts. I'm not sure that's ever going to actually happen, but... But it's nice it's, to know that you're covered. And it's it's a protection, and that's exactly what they're, they're on about. There's only one thing i found that I don't love about this device, and that's on the back. They include a BNC socket to attach a, a BNC light device. If you're using this in an audio environment, that's fine. I think if you're using it in a video environment, you want to make sure nobody plugged a camera in by mistake. Yeah. Other than that, I think if the lamp uh, get, gets put on there and permanently attached, you're probably going to be okay. You probably are. And of course, what that means is you put a lamp on the back of this in the rack where you also need light. Really, really clever idea. So, provided so you you're can careful, see what you're patching. You can see what you're doing in the back of the rack. Absolutely. Radical. So, two banks of power outlets on the back, a breaker for each one, so you don't lose everything if one of your devices goes, goes feral on you, and it has a 15 amp input. So, although each outlet is only rated for 10 amps, which is quite a lot, um, the whole unit will take 15 amps, which again is 
quite a lot. Yeah, look, I think the reality is that most people will be using these um, in racks to drive uh, outboard processing. They'll be using them in stage and, boxes. And, and they're going to be the using them to, to run, you know, 10 devices that draw, you know, 100 watts. Absolutely, you absolutely. Know, and you're you, never going to get anywhere near the rating of the no, device. No, look, it, it's, it's, it's rated way over what you'd ever need yeah. in a practical application. Um, we did actually uh, we we did actually do an experiment on this to see if uh, we could get the over voltage protection to work. And so, how did it work out? Well, have a look at this. Jeff McKenzie from Jans. If we had a way of putting say 350 volts into both of these devices right now, what do you reckon we'd see? Well, what we'd see is that the domestic surge protection board uses a device called an MOV, which attempts to shunt the surge away. Ah. But the load is still connected and you can never shunt 100% of the surge away. Right. Whereas the firmware will physically disconnect. And that waits for a reset from the user. Correct. Let's try it. Yeah, so if I hit the button, just to quickly explain, this lamp is on the domestic board, this lamp and the wireless receiver is on the firmware. Mm -hmm. They're both, when I hit the button, they're currently getting about 230 volts now. When I hit the button, they're gonna get about 350 volts. So we hit the button, you can see the surge has traveled straight through that board to the load. There's next to no protection happening whatsoever. That's the firm and shut down straight Definitely away. getting through. Yeah, we're still rolling. Okay. Oh, here we go. There we go. We got smoke. Big thanks to JMac from Jans for the demonstration. That was pretty impressive and pretty convincing. And you see the smoke come out of the device that wasn't protected. Yeah. So I think we've, we've got the story. Yeah. And I think we've also, uh, that, that, that kind of gives you an illustration on the difference between you know, an MOV surge protector in a power board yeah, yeah. versus something like something this device. Something pretty serious. The Furman PL Pro.